Hello and welcome to this second video on interactive storytelling with HTML5. Now if you recall on our first video uh, we saw how we could do uh, an interactive story using HTML5. And just sort of to refresh ourselves, let me refresh the page here. Greetings friends and welcome to this special play. And if you recall I can click on one of these here this place, friend, is the land of all things possible. It is a great place to be. Okay, so now you're probably curious, or at least hopefully you're probably curious, as to how this was done. And that's what this video is about. So just sort of bear with me. Let me have a sip of coffee. Ah, oh, that's good. Remember I said that this video here... Uh, was a single web page. It didn't use a bunch of web pages. Let me bring this over and I can show you how how this is organized and you can uh, hopefully easily modify this stuff and make it so that you can make your own interactive stories with it. Uh, what I have here are essentially one, two, three, four, uh, four files and I have two folders. One folder holds all my audio files. The other folder holds all my image files. That is, if I'm not using inline linking. This is the index page right here. The one that, that is actually this whole guy here. The other, the other thing I have is I have my story engine. The story engine contains a lot of code, uh, which has the logic and the AI that runs the whole thing. I don't want to show that to you right now. We'll, we'll go over that in a future lesson, especially to those who are non-programmers, because uh, it may be a little bit uh, intimidating. This right here is my cascading style sheet, which I keep separate from the uh, HTML structure. This gives me the style that I have here. Uh, I'm actually using CSS3. That's how I get this nice little, little um, uh, shadow here and uh, that's how I get the audio to play uh, easily and then the other thing I have is the key of how you make your your stories I have uh, a JavaScript file uh, that is linked to this index just like the story engine is linked to this index and uh, let me open the index file and show you that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it with uh, notepad because that's how I programmed it and I'm going to bring it right into here and uh, when I do that I'm going to focus right at the top uh, let me bring this guy up here at the top so you can see what I've done here and uh, let me bring it in a little bit more hopefully that will make it easier for you to see what I've done right at the top here is I have uh, a script uh, which is my stranger.js. I kept this separate from the HTML document. So all I have to do if I want to change the storyline, I only have to work on this particular file here, stranger JavaScript. Uh, the story engine I leave alone. That just comes with it. And uh, in future videos, I'll have you be able to download that story engine, and you're more than welcome to use it yourself for any purpose that you wish. Um, the other thing is uh, that this is where my style sheet is. My style I keep separate. It's called stranger.css. So if you want to change the style of the way the story looks, all you have to do is change the style sheet. You don't have to worry about any of the HTML st uh, stuff. What I've got here is that when the uh, page loads, it automatically goes to this function called get story and it starts at zero and we'll explain that later what that means right now it's just copy and paste and the rest is just pretty much HTML code what might be unique uh, to some of you folks is what's further on down here and if I come down here and I'm going to need to stretch this dude out here so you can see everything ooh that's a big stretch uh, let me sort of stretch this out here now like this these are these are running into each other. Uh, what this is, is that 
these are the the uh, what you will view on your actual screen. This is the stuff that you'll see uh, here, which is this stuff. And if you you look at the HTML code for it, it looks rather weird. What I've got here is I'm simply setting a class for this, and this helps on my styling. I'm giving each one of these an ID. And what I'm saying is that on mouse over, I use a script that uh, changes the color of it when I roll over that particular text. And when I take the mouse out, it changes the color back. It gives the illusion that it's a hyperlink, but it's really not. It's really not a, a hyperlink. What happens is that when I do a mouse over on this, uh, like for example on this guy here, there's the mouse over. Notice it changes the color and uh, that gives the illusion as if it's a hyperlink and and the other thing that gives an illusion is that when I move the mouse over that notice it changes it into a hand that's all done with style sheets uh, it changes it, it ch it'll change that into a hand uh, so actually what I'm doing with this is I'm using um, JavaScript with the document object model that's part of the engine so it gives the illusion that these are hyperlinks, but they're really not. Uh, they keep everything right in this document. As a matter of fact, uh, let me come over here, bring this guy here. When I do a, uh, a mouse click, and let me bring this out, uh, and you can see the click. When I click on it, I actually get part of the story. Uh, and, and this tells me which part I clicked on. This tells the engine... Did you click on response one, on response two, or response three, or response four? Okay. All right. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing and it was somewhat enlightening. Uh, let's now go back and look at the guts of this. Let's look at the story engine. Uh, no, no, no. We're not going to look at the story engine. Heaven forbid. No. Uh, <laughs> that will be might be a bit overwhelming. Wait, I need another sip of coffee here. Let's look and see how the story itself was done, which is right here, uh, stranger.javascript, okay? So I'm going to open this up with, uh, open with uh, Notepad, and there it is in all its glory, and let me bring it over here so you can see it, and I'll bring this up here so you can see it better and get the idea of what it looks like. And as you may have suspected, this is done with arrays. And it's very easy to change, it's very easy to modify, it's very easy to add elements to the story. Fundamentally what I have here, I created three new arrays in JavaScript. One called words, and that's the words that you actually see on the, see on the story. Uh, wait a minute, excuse me, let me make this guy go down here again. And I'm going to try bringing this, this out of the way. Okay, whoops, thank you Windows. It wants to try and help me, but it's not being much of a help. Okay, here we go. So, I made three new arrays. One for the words that you see, another one for the image that you see, another one for the audio that you hear. And fundamentally, uh, I have what's called a page, which is this right here. And a page consists of a, ma of a major uh, uh, array. And the word array comes from the word arrangements. And when I have an array 1, uh, I have an array 1 sub 0, I have an array 1 sub 1, array 1 sub 2, 1 sub 3, 1 sub 4. Then I have an image 1 and an audio 1. And I have a words 1, like which is a new array. So, any, this, the first array, which is a 1, that represents the first page. This is the first page when I load it. It'll say, greetings, friend, welcome to special praise, so on and so forth. And then... The responses are, uh, for the sub 1 here, greetings uh, to you too, what is this place? And then uh, uh, number 2, thanks, and who are you, and so on. So let's look at what that means. If I come here to the story and I do a refresh here. Greetings, friend, and welcome to this special place. Okay, and then I come here and I look and see what that is. It says, greetings to you too, what is this place? That's what I see here. Greetings to you too, and welcome to this special place. And uh, and then I see that uh, 
for that page, it plays, uh, it shows the image of the beggar, and it plays the audio uh, for the beggar, and the audio is all MP3. This is what will be on the next page, and how may I help you, and then the, the options. And then this is going to be what's on the third page, and so on. And that's how this whole story is built up. And it's easy enough for me to add uh, uh, more pages to this by using this method. So now you might be asking yourself, well, now, wait a minute. That's cool. But what are these little things with a tilde and the number? Like, for example, greetings to you too. What is this place? Well, what that little tilde with a number is, that tells me what page I'm going to go to if I happen to click on this. Like, for example, this says you're going to go to page 3. So, greetings to you too. And what is this place? If I come down here to page 3, it will say... This place, friend, is the land of, and then notice I have HTML code in here, which bold faces this. So I can easily intersperse my story with HTML code. All things possible. And uh, then I'll come up, wow, sounds like a great place. And if I click on that, I'll go to page number seven. So let's see, in fact, if I do go to page number three from, um, from this guy up here. Greetings. At, uh, Greetings to you too, and what is this place? Let's see if I actually go down here to three, which says this place, friend, is land of all things possible. Okay, so, uh, and welcome to the special place. Greetings to you too, what is this place? This place, friend, is the land of all things possible. Okay, so sure enough, that's what it did. It went all things possible, and um, it's doing that again. And if I come over here and look at three, I see that it had a different image, land JPEG, and a different audio file. So what I wanted to do here was to show how straightforward it is to make these stories. You don't have to make a ton of HTML documents. All you have to do is use a simple text editor like Notepad, and you can take these, these pages right here and you can copy and paste down to the end and you can add new stuff like even though uh, the end of the story is somewhere down here let me let me click on it see if I get it for you like right here I can copy and paste and add to it and call it now words 13 and then I can make links down to words 13 which can now go to word 14 and then 15 I can have as many array elements as I wish there's no theoretical limit to the number of pages that I can have using this system. Okay, uh, so that'll be it for, for, uh, for this video. And on our next video series, we'll start looking at some of the other stuff that, that we did. Uh, like, for example, um, how we did the, uh, the, uh, the HTML itself and how we used the document object model to make it look like that they're links when they're really not links and then we'll start wrapping it up with the engine itself how the engine itself is coded and then we'll also start seeing how we can start embellishing this uh, with other uh, elements as well okay that's it for now thank you for watching